Men's mental health has been in the spotlight recently when FA Cup third round fixtures were delayed by one minute to encourage fans to talk about their well-being. But long before that campaign, one man was already helping hundreds of men tackle their problems. Former rugby league player Luke Ambler set up Andy's Man Club back in 2016 after his brother-in-law took his own life at the age of just 23 that same year. The support group started as a weekly event for a handful of men in Halifax, but it's now expanded to 25 locations, two more opening very soon, I'm reliably told, with more than 750 people attending each and every week. Well, I'm pleased to say Luke Ambler joins me now to tell us more about the club and al alongside him, Dan Rowe, who used the club to turn his life around and is now well involved in the Andes Man Club family uh, giving back. Gentlemen, lovely to have you on the show. Thank you for coming to Thanks see for us. Luke, this is an incredible initiative that you started out of something so tragic for your family. Um, take me back to that time. It was your brother-in-law, Andy, who yep. took his own life. Tell me a bit about him and how him taking his own life affected your family at the time. 23-year-old um, lad, lad's lad. You know, weekend that weekend, he'd, uh, he'd spent some time with his daughter. He'd been to the play gym with, with his sister, which is my partner, and our kids. And, um, yeah, he even played football that weekend for his old team. He'd gone and watched them and uh, he'd played. And then that night he was Snapchatting his friends while he was about a trip to Thailand they were going on. And I was seeing him on the Wednesday to, he was going to buy an house and we were going to talk about that. And then, you know, I remember getting the phone call from my mother in law just, you know, screaming, saying, Our Andrew's dead. And um, I always say, you know, uh, selfishly, uh, I set Andy's Man Club up, not even for the men originally. It was so that other families didn't have to go through what I'd been through because I'll never ever get the ring uh, out of my head of my six year old boy Screech when we told him about his favourite uncle had died and uh, I sort of the driving force behind setting this up so that guys didn't have to do the, the route that Andy did. It's interesting, isn't it, Luke? You talk about the events of that weekend and Andy carrying on normal life, laughing, joking, getting on with things. So he talked, but he didn't talk, if you see what I mean. And Absolutely. setting up this club, it's encouraging men to talk about deeper things than just what you're up to this weekend, your holiday, your football team, to talk about you know, deeper things in, in everyday conversation because you think that perhaps if Andy had done that, things might have turned out differently. Yeah, I was speaking to Dan Antway here, wheeling enough actually about being a rugby player. Um, and the conversation of as a rugby player is never really off the surface. It's, you know, women, rugby, all that macho stuff. And you never really get to, a, to another level. And I think that's, you know, so men as a whole across society, we don't really ever get... Uh, much deeper and I'll never forget uh, I were at a family wedding and I just thought, do you know what, I, I've been through my problems, a lot of men have, um, it's about time that we all hopefully start talking about it. and I approached my mother-in-law and said, let's come up with this idea and uh, that's where it was born really, at that wedding, uh, you know, I'd had this idea about getting men talking just like myself, normal blokes, and I say normal blokes because there's this stigma around that if you've got a mental health problem or you're suicidal or you have a bit of an hard time, you broke up with your partner or you're in a bit of debt, that, that you might be a bit weird. And, and I think that it's just normal life, in it. And if people can understand that, that actually taking that mask off that we all wear, you know, you'll wear one at work and I wear one and Dan will wear one. We all wear this mask because we want to be in this perfect society, don't we? Life ain't perfect, though, is it? And I think once we all start to realise that, like life does become a little bit more perfect because you understand that we're all going through storms. And I, I haven't met anyone yet that either going through a storm or just been through a storm as a storm brewing and mm. hope you know if you could wind back the, ta the time and Andy maybe that weekend would have just gone struggling with X, Y, Z you know maybe one of us could have gone ABC and uh, maybe just helped him through I genuinely believe if he'd have talked even a little bit we could have offered him some words of encouragement maybe stick around and try fight through whatever we were going through but wasn't the case for it. You put it so well, everybody has mental health. It just tends to be that some people have better mental health than others. We all go through, you know, various cycles when it comes to mental health. Um, Dan, explain to me how you found yourself at Andy's Man's Club. Yeah, so I've been going to Andy's Man's Club for, for two years. Um, in fact, it was the anniversary last week in terms of the two years. And on the, the Saturday before, I made my third attempt at my own life. Um, and... My mental health started, or my poor mental health started, with the birth of my son. So he was poorly when he was uh, when he was first born. He's, he's absolutely fine now. He's a very happy four-year-old boy. But I did what every man, or what I think every man does. I became protective of everybody else, and I made sure that everybody else was OK. Um, I didn't look after myself. I didn't open up. I didn't talk about what was going on. And unfortunately, it took being suicidal and, and making those kind of attempts that... I had nowhere else to go. I'm a big rugby league fan, so I kind of followed a bit of uh, Luke's, uh, Luke's career anyway, so I knew about Andy's Man Club. And just going through the door was the hardest thing in the world for me, 
I was going to say, what made you go through the door of Andy's Man Club rather than talk to family and friends? It's interesting, isn't it? Often it's easier for men to open up to other people they don't know very well. Yeah, I think being vulnerable with the people that you're closest with is the hardest thing in the you're world, isn't it? You're trying to protect. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, so for me, going and talking to a bunch of strangers didn't seem easy, but seemed easier, mm. if, if you like. So I remember that I got to the, the Andy's Man Club at Oldham, um, probably about an hour early. Um, and I sat in the car and I, I remember to this day just thinking, I'm going to wait here till about half seven, the club starts at seven. I'll wait here in the car till about half seven, I'll go home and say it doesn't work. It's not for me. And though I got a knock on the window at half six and it was a guy that uses the club and he kind of knocked on the window and I put the window down and he said, are you here for Andy's Man Club, mate? And I was sat in a leisure centre car park. I couldn't think of another reason why I'd be at this leisure centre other than Andy's Man Club. And it was kind of a desperation of... I need to do this because because I want my son to have a father. And Luke, you literally have people getting in touch with you saying not just that you've changed their lives, but you've saved their lives. Yeah, not me. People like Dan, you know, um, who turn up every Monday. I think the heroes are, are those guys who have walked through the door like Dan, uh, been in that extremely dark place, and then come through the other side and thought, you know, I want to give back now. And you know, all those, you know, I'm very fortunate being the founder that you get the. The, to be able to do things like this, to be able to raise the awareness, to get the, the plaudits, but none of that stuff means a lot to me. What it means to, to me is that what Dan just said, that his son gets his dad home at a night and we get maybe 100 messages a week, some weeks on busy weeks, where the message will be like, they saved my dad's life, my brother's life, my uncle's life, and I'm just talking in makeup there now. Um, even like women will message or other guys who've never been to a club and they'll say, never going to go to a club. The people watching this right now will go, I'm never going to go to a club, never want to go to a club, but actually just even other people speak about how they feel makes me want to be able to talk to my wife, to my husband. And that's enough, do you know? Like, if you can just... And his man club, that we've got here, you, know, like you can see it's black and white. And the reason why it's white, and it might sound corny to some people, when you're in a dark place, right, it's all you see is dark. Mm. And Andy's man club, and it's OK to talk, the why it was meant to be that you're a little bit of light, even if it's a little bit of light, in someone's dark time, because the biggest killer um, with suicide is actually just lack of hope. And all we want to give is hope. It's interesting, isn't it? I wonder how you take encouragement from high-profile figures talking up about mental health. Obviously, we've got Princes William and Harry very much in the news at the moment that are strong advocates for mental health. And also, I'm sure you'll have followed this over the weekend, uh, Rob Burrow, um, you know, <laughs> Leeds Rhino, um, former player, speaking yeah. about, about his motor neurone disease and how he was only diagnosed a month ago. And I was listening to an interview he gave earlier today saying, I'm not one for emotion, I'm not one for talking, but this makes me want to talk to people about it. So how is it important is it that high profile figures like that who are going through something speak out openly? Um, I played with Rob, I went to Vegas with Rob and it's absolutely broken me this whole story. It's just, you know, just a bit of... Yeah, it's been a real tough one. I think um, by Rob having the outlook he has put a lot of perspective uh, into life for a lot of people. You know, there's a guy who's been dealt a really bad hand and he's going to make the best of it and I think if anyone could take anything away today from us, from Rob, from anything, it's that we're all getting dealt and some miles worse than others, like Rob's is horrendous. Uh, he's not been out of my thoughts since, just been on about it out there, some stuff I want to do for him. Um, if you can take a little bit of hope from Rob, that there's the job in it, that's job done, because there's people out there struggling with far less things than Rob, but who might be able to take some hope and inspiration about, let's try and make the best out of this. And that's ultimately all we want to do in it, try and make the best out of those bad situations. Dan, if people are watching and they're thinking, Andy's Man Club might be for me, I might get some use out of this, I want to come along and try it, like you did yeah. that fateful yeah, night yeah. in the Leisure Centre <laughs> car park. Um, what will they get out of it? What will they find when they walk through the door? The first thing they'll find is a, a warm welcome. Um, and, and the facilitators are always outside the venues from about half six, just to welcome people in, because we know how hard it is taking that kind of first step through the door, so it's really important that we're kind of there, we're visible to, to kind of welcome people in. What you'll find is a group of guys that you wouldn't necessarily associate with in, in your day-to-day -day life. You might not have come across the, these kind of people, and you'll find that you've all got one thing in common, and that's that you all want to help yourself, and you want to help your families by improving your own mentality. And I think that's a kind of a, one of the really powerful things about Andy's Man Club is it's not taking responsibility away from the individual. It's actually providing them with a platform to take their own personal responsibility and actually change their own mentality, change their own lives for the, for the positive. And I guess, like, 
like Luke says there, in terms of the messages that, that we get into the into the club, I know from running Manchester, is the fact that we get so many of the guys coming back saying, and, and the transformation is 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 amazing. Mm -hmm. I mean, look at my own personal transformation within two years. I, I, I do things now that I never thought that I would ever get kind of involved in. I'm friends now with people that I just wouldn't, our paths wouldn't cross mm -hmm. without that kind of power of, of, of really AMC. But it, it's just that group collective of knowing that you're not alone, there is hope. And you know what? There's guys that are going through what you're going through. Oh, well, Dan and Luke, you've really sort of lifted our Monday mood here. And the clubs take place on a Monday night, don't they? Yeah, yeah. seven o'clock, all over UK, from as north as... Dundee. You're, you're going to walk it out from as north as Dundee to as south as Torbay. Yeah. Devon, Plymouth, Plymouth, and yeah. everywhere in between. So, so, twenty-seven clubs across the country, and you know, it gets people's week started on a good note on a Monday if they can talk about their feelings. Uh, and Luke, just finally, where can people go for inf more information? You've got a website. Yeah, and it's mancub.co.uk and social media. It's all over there. So, <laughs> you know, just get along to a group tonight. You know, get you just take that step. That's what we always say. Take that step, and if one man can be helped from this interview today, then it's worth the yeah. nine hours travel we've both well, done for it. There'll be a warm welcome for you, Andy's Man Club. Thank you very much for making Thank the you. journey. Really great to meet you both, Luke and Dan. Thank you. Yes.